may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
second lesson is from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy, in proportion to faith, ministry, in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord.
came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. life 
is misinformed. Misinformed. And the other foundation you're, you're building on is going to crumble. So he makes this appeal to us, to the Romans. He says, you've tasted this goodness. You know it firsthand. You know it from the inside out. You've tasted God's mercy. And you know that there's nothing that beats it. And I want you to offer your life in that same way as a sign of God's mercy. That's going to be your organizing principle. That's what you're going to do when you get up in the morning is think, okay, I'm an amplifier of mercy. I'm not really a dog chasing its own tail. I'm an amplifier of mercy. The Holy Spirit's been put in me so that I can amplify, or we say it nicely in the, in the call of purity, don't we? Something about magnifying, magnifying God's love. That that's our purpose, that that's our operating system. Notice that Paul is not telling the Romans or telling us to work harder in order to be in a right relationship. That if we do things just right, we'll be in a right relationship. No. <laughs> Emphatically, he is not saying that. Instead, God, instead Paul is saying that since God's mercy has restored us to a right relationship with God, it's done. Relax, folks. It's done. It's done. And he's given us God's spirit without us deserving this in the least. We can now live the life of mercy as an expression of our, our thanks. That living mercy is a way of expressing thanks. Again, how do we operate? We operate principally from a central place of gratitude and thanksgiving. That the mercy that we show is something like an expression of thanksgiving, of giving on something that we've received. That we've received it, and there's plenty of it. Paul is making an appeal for us to grow in mercy by participating in it actively by offering ourselves to it. So you want to know how to worship, you want to know how to be spiritually healthy, this for Paul is the key. In your body, you express the mercy of God where you find yourself. You express it tangibly, you express it wherever it's needed, and with whomever you're with. You want to try to live the spiritual life and get it deeper? Do that. Focus on that. Make that your operating system. It's the only antidote to chasing our tails. A key here is not to fight anger. Have you ever noticed what happens when you try to fight anger within yourself? How's it work? I'm getting this from the back, okay. Yeah. Instead of fighting anger, we're pointed in a different direction. And what we're pointed toward is Christ in Christ's self-emptying love. Paul gives us a hint of this when he says, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. Well, that leaves a lot of room, doesn't it? Don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. 
when we get out of the realm of thinking that we're not like the next person who needs mercy, we're in deep trouble. When we start thinking, now I'm going to just give you an example. This is not um, in any way to say that the kind of protests that have been happening in our society um, against white supremacy and bigotry and racism and all, all that ugliness are not necessary. It's just to say that when we're fighting against those negative things, we aren't yet fighting for the positive thing. It's a good place to start, to cease the negative, but it doesn't put in place what does mercy look like in response to racism? What does mercy look like in response to white supremacy? What does mercy look like? That's the question. That's where the healing and wholeness comes. Not from protesting against and feeling, at least me, slightly superior to those who are wrong-minded, which is maybe one of those things I ought not to be thinking. You catch me? But rather, Mother Teresa said it, I'm not going to go to an anti-war rally. When they start having a pro-peace rally, I'll show up. That's where we are right now, I think, in our culture, in our world, is trying to figure out what positive ways do we move forward. And all I'm saying from Paul's letter today is it's got to have that feel, that organizing principle of mercy, or we don't have a prayer. That's what I'm saying. And he emphasizes it. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Changing our minds, getting out of the back and forth, you know, that gets us round and round in that anger cycle. Stepping out of that cycle and being transformed is what we're called to be by the renewing of our minds. Now, this isn't a one-time event. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Here I am back chasing my tail again. <laughs> oh yeah. No, here I am back engaging that kind of control fight. No, I'm going to let the mercy of God claim me. And this transformation requires a new orientation. We do not know how to create the future right now. We seem at a loss with no clear direction. I, at least I'm looking for somebody who's got clear direction and I haven't heard it yet. And to me, that means that we've got to discern some new way of moving forward. Some new way. We don't know yet what it is. We kind of have to feel our way forward. Isn't that the way it is when you're, you're trying to open yourself up? I'll tell you how this happened with me, with my brother Mark. Oh my. You know, he's on the total opposite um, political spectrum from me. Theologically, he doesn't think like me. We're brothers, though, you know. And we're left a legacy with a, a, a father and sort of like say, okay, you're going to work it out. <laughs> you are going to work this out. And we both heard that. So we're both trying to work it out. But my goodness, it's not a smooth road. It's not a smooth road toward that kind of relationship that we both would like to have. We don't really know what we're doing. We're really dependent upon God's grace, and maybe that's 
the healthiest thing of it when you don't know what you're doing. You learn to trust in a new way and what God is doing or trying to do with you and the relationships you're a part of. That for me is the whole. And there's been small little lights that are sort of breaking through. You know, we start chasing around like this. And we stop and we move forward a little bit. And I kind of think that's the way it is, not only with our society, but in our church today. We don't know the way forward. We do know that mercy is the key. We do know that mercy and loving kindness is the key. And that each of us carries that mercy and loving kindness. That it's at the core of our real self, that the Holy Spirit has been poured into our hearts, each of us, so that we're vessels of that, of the Holy, vessels of God's mercy at our very deepest identity. We share that common mark. Not an easy hope, but one that says, that there will be, through this time of confusion, through this time of in-between, together, because we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can find a way to the other side. To the other side. I've seen your willingness to do this. I've seen it. I've seen God's mercy at work and the way that you've cared and cared for each other. I see God's mercy at work and that desire to put together a pastoral care team. I see God's mercy at work and the desire to communicate better um, with one another. I see God's mercy at work in depending upon one another to do the common work, in depending on one another to figure a way to provide education children and for each other. It doesn't look like a terribly powerful thing from the outside, but those who know it from the inside out, who have tasted the goodness of it, us in other words, know the power of it to renew. So for me, there's a um, song that goes like this. This is about a prayer to invite ourselves to think of ourselves as channels of that mercy. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and
Prayers of the People's Forum 4, found in the prayer book on page 388.
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
God, you can do that in, in your heart, in faith and in spirit. Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the new members of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. You have led us as a spiritual proof in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord.
faith 